Well, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is going to be the 10 cent beer night was a total disaster. Um, now, I believe this is in Cleveland where obviously we saw that mental NFL game, which was a game the NFL apparently wants us to forget and it was absolutely insane. Uh, so we know what Cleveland people are like when they've got beer inside them and when a decision goes against them. Now, I don't know if this is decision based, but 10 cent beer night. It sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. That is too cheap for a beer. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it, but that means you're going to be nailing them just for the sake of nailing them because of the 10 cent. I mean, it's common sense, right? So, it's going to be a disaster. Everyone's going to be absolutely hammered. Let's get straight into this one. I've been told a lot of good things about this. Let's see what we got. 10 cent beer night at a baseball game sounds like okay, a great Okay, it's baseball. Idea. At least, that's what the Cleveland Indians thought one humid summer night in 1974. In fairness, at first glance, 10 cent beer night sounds like the perfect plan to sell tickets to a ball game, but Sell so tickets, yes. For a disaster, no. It's a per yeah, well, sorry, it's a perfect thing for a disaster. When beers are 10 cents, one Mental. Dime, all night, let's just say things went off the rails pretty quickly. Yeah. Here's the story of the infamous 10 cent beer night. Before we get into the events of that fateful evening, it's important to understand the build-up to the moment. Sure, 10 cent, 12 ounce beers all night is already a recipe for disaster, <laughs> yep. but if you look at the history of the players, the teams, the managers, the city involved, it just makes it worse. First, <laughs> the two teams. 10 cent beer night was to be held in Cleveland while the Indians were hosting the Texas Rangers. Okay. Earlier in the season, while the Indians were on the road in Texas playing the Rangers, the teams got into a brawl, like a legit fight. No. Okay, so not only have you come up with this brilliant idea of selling alcohol to a lot of chaotic, emotional fans uh, to a baseball game, but you've picked a game where there's already been a brawl between these two teams. Tensions are going to be high already, man. Not one of those brawls where everyone just sort of dances around and yells at each other. There was an incident where one of the Indians slid into second base too hard in the eyes of the Rangers. Okay. So then there were some fastballs being thrown at people's heads which led to legit wow. punches being thrown, a brawl, and Rangers fans throwing food and beers at Indian players. Holy. So, there is plenty of bad blood between the two teams heading into their series in Cleveland. Yep. And Cleveland Indians fans are now all fired up for their newfound rivals to come to town. Now, let's talk about the city of Cleveland and its people in 1974. Being fired up for a baseball team you don't like to come to town is, again, already a recipe for some sort of incident. <laughs> but Cleveland was already a city on the brink. In the decades leading up to that fateful summer evening in 1974, Cleveland saw around 600 factories shut down. With that came the loss man. of thousands upon thousands of jobs, surging rates of poverty, drug addiction, and crime out of desperation. Cleveland was burning. Yeah. Literally. The That's horrible to hear. Cleveland wait, was wait, what? The river was on fire. I mean, that literally, if, if it doesn't sum up what is happening more... And what has just been described, which is absolutely horrible, and I hope back then uh, when this happened that everyone was okay in the end, that everyone got through it. I do, fingers crossed. But the fact that the river was on fire just sums it up. Think what you thought potentially is impossible. Let me know how that's happened. Did a lot of oil come into the river or something like that and the oil was still burning? I don't know, something like that. Let me know in the comments, guys, because that is amazing to me that that could do it. But it definitely sums up kind of the atmosphere and mood in Cleveland at the time, it seems. So riddled with pollution and waste from the factories which abandoned them that the Cuyahoga River, which runs through the city, caught fire. Wow, man. More than once, sending More flames once. five wow. stories high. The river was on fire. Holy. The city was a stick of dynamite, and the fuse was 10 cent beer night. If you're imagining that there couldn't possibly be a good outcome to this whole 10 cent beers all night, then I'm thing, right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. So here we go. The promotion worked. The Indians, who were terrible at the time, were only averaging a few thousand fans per game. Okay. 25,000 plus fans oh, showed up that's for nasty, 10 cent man. beer night. The echoes of Chief Wahoo's famous war drums filling the air, accompanied by the flashes and howls of firecrackers, which the fans brought themselves <laughs> because it was 1974 <laughs> oh and it my was 10 cent beer night. Yep. In the second inning, after the Rangers took the lead with a dinger, a fat middle-aged woman jumped onto the field, ran to the Indians on deck circle, and flashed her breast to the crowd. Oh and then my tried to kiss God, the head man. Umpire. As yeah, that's what my beer does. It goes straight to the head for some people, and for 10 cent, it's going to be going to a lot of people's head because you're going to be necking them. You can them. guess, she was hammered. Yeah. This was the second inning. In the fourth <laughs> inning, after the Rangers hit another oh dinger, my a man, God. fully nude, ran onto the oh field my God. and slid into second base. Then that guy ran off. They didn't catch him. Maybe they didn't <laughs> want to. Cleveland was just warming up. 
At this point in the evening, the people pouring the beer for the fans weren't able to keep up with the demand at the concession stands. The one rule at the stadium was you could only purchase six cups of beer at a time. Not six beers total all night. It was six beers at a time. per person at one time. Yeah, for 10 cents, you'd be ordering six every single time. Even if you drop five going back to your seat, you've still got it at a deal. You may save one and a half. It's worth it, man. It is so worth it. So people were just buying six beers <laughs> for 60 cents, drinking them, getting back in line and doing it all over again. Yep. As you might imagine, it was a madhouse. So to try to keep up with the consumption, they just brought in the beer trucks, set up the trucks outside of the outfield fence, and just had people line up right at the beer trucks to get their 10 cent oh, beer. Oh, wow. And who was handing out the beers at the beer trucks? Well, it was two teenage girls in skimpy tops because it was the 70s, and here we are. Okay. <laughs> two scantily clad teenage, teenage girls handing out beers at 10 cents a pop to drunken, laid-off factory workers on a hot, humid summer night with war drums and fireworks going off in the background. Disaster. What could possibly go wrong? Recipe for well, disaster. of course, these poor girls can't keep up with this setup either, and they just walked off. And why Oh, okay. Well, that's good. The guys in line grabbed the table that had been set up to collect the cash for the beers, and they just hucked it over the trucks. Now, 10 cent beer night basically turned into <laughs> free beer night. Oh, my there God. There were guys not even bothering to fill up cups. They were just hauling off the tap <laughs> on the beer truck. In the wow. Two men jumped over the outfield wall and mooned the Rangers outfielders. <laughs> this brought about another stoppage in play as security chased these guys all over the diamond, the players looking on helplessly. Shortly after this, Rangers manager Billy Martin headed to the mound for a conference with his pitcher. Upset that he was delaying the game, the Indians fans threw full cups of beer onto the field. Because who cares, they cost 10 cents or were free. <laughs> exactly. Upon returning to the dugout, Billy Martin blew kisses at the fans resulting in Indians fans shooting fireworks into the Rangers' bullpen. What? Which was then ordered to be evacuated by the Empire. Oh, this my is real. God. This happened at a Major League Baseball game. Yo, this is an absolute madness. Like, imagine if they did something like this nowadays. I mean, I'd have a field day drinking. I wouldn't do any of the bad stuff like that. I'd have a field day, 10 cent. Can't complain with that. But holy, shooting fireworks into the dugout. Holy, After man. This, the public address announcer proclaimed, please don't throw things onto the field. This <laughs> resulted in... You guessed it. More people throwing it. A tsunami of litter <laughs> raining down on the field. Wow. From that point on, they decided to abandon making announcements over the PA system. Basically, the inmates were running the asylum. The Indians didn't think to have any extra police presence at the stadium that night. There were 50 security guards. 50. For 25,000 fans. The Rangers' Hammered first fans. baseman estimated he had 20 pounds of hot dogs thrown at him. And oh, he was also nearly hit by a gallon jug of Thunderbird wine. It was at that moment that things went from just pure insanity to dangerous. At this point, there are so many streakers on the field, the security oh, just stopped trying to catch them. All this while the Indians and Rangers were trying to play a baseball game, <laughs> which is hard when the outfield is full of naked people and they're tearing the padding off the left field wall. I can imagine. And a few fans stole the bases. <laughs> they took the bases off the field. They just took oh, them. Wow. In the eighth, cherry bombs started raining down in the Rangers' dugout. In the ninth, the Indians staged a remarkable comeback and tied the game at five. How, how have they made it to the ninth, by the way, while all this is going on? They haven't even got bases, as is. That's when a drunk guy ran onto the outfield and tried to grab one of the Rangers outfielders' hats. This was the last straw. From the dugout, all the Rangers could see was a fan attacking their outfielder. So Billy Martin looked to his team, grabbed a bat, and charged onto the field like it was a war zone. And you know what? what? It kind of was. This resulted in a sea of fans coming out of the stands to fight the Texas Rangers, which resulted in the Indians running onto the field with their bats to fend off their own fans and fight with the Rangers. Oh this my is all God. so insane, it's almost starting to sound normal. Let me just <laughs> remind you, this was a Major League Baseball game. A Yo. street fight between the players, the professional big league players, and the fans happened in the outfield. People were getting hit with bats, the chief umpire got hit in the head with a oh chair. Oh my god. People were bleeding. People were injured badly. The SWAT team had to come in with tear gas and clear it all up. All while, and this is maybe the best part, the stadium organist was playing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. In the end, <laughs> the game was forfeited to Texas. 60,000 beers were consumed at 10 cents a pop. 60,000. There were 19 man. streakers. Seven emergency as well. That's 60,000 at 10 cents a pop doesn't include all the free ones, doesn't include people just get, grabbing it and absolutely chugging it. Wow, man, 
only in Cleveland. After we see that NFL uh, game, people didn't want to see. I thought that was the limit. People suggested this. I thought, okay, we'll check it out. What's the worst that could happen? It's not going to be anywhere near. People aren't going to be getting their heads split open with balls. Holy man! Wow. Really injuries and nine arrests. To this day, those stolen bases the fans just took have never been returned. <laughs> Thanks and for watching. That's a nice little souvenir for somebody. I hope you guys have enjoyed this reaction. I really have enjoyed this. What an absolute mental night. And who thought of that idea? Because whoever thought of that idea is definitely getting sacked that next morning. Uh, definitely was sacked, 100%. What a madness night. Imagine if it did some um, nowadays like that. Do you think it would have the same result? Let me know in the comments, guys. I'd really appreciate that. And yeah, let me know what you thought about this whole event. And if you were potentially there, 74, uh, potentially some of you guys were there or around watching it live so let me know in the comments guys have a fantastic day hit that subscribe button if you're new around here hit that like button and i'll see you in the next one peace